Good morning. Welcome to Medford United Methodist Church. It's good to have you with us. My name is Joe Monahan. I want to welcome you on behalf of myself and also our associate pastor Kathleen Stoles. It's good to see you this morning. We have a very busy day in worship planned. It's already been a very busy day and uh, it's been wonderful to have uh, the executive director of REACH. Tim Dayton is here and he's been uh, preaching and we are really happy about every uh, opportunity that we have to talk about this ministry partnership that we have with his organization. Uh, this is where our youth and our adults go uh, on their mission trip during the summer. And uh, so we're going to hear a lot about that today. We're excited about that. A couple of announcements as we get started. First, I want to ask uh, uh, that all of you take a minute. There's a red attendance pad that's on the inside of the pew. I invite you to pass it down towards the center, or pass it down from the center towards the end, and then pass it back to the center so that as it comes by, I hope that you'll take note of the names of the folks who are seated around you. And if you are uh, visiting, maybe for the first time today, I want to say a special word of welcome to you and hope that you'll take some time at the bottom of the page to complete that section that talks about your, uh, your contact information so that we can let you know about things that are going on here at the church. A couple of other announcements as we're getting started. Actually, I have several this morning. I want to say thanks, first of all, for everybody who came out for the work day yesterday. We had a great time. Uh, we painted a room uh, downstairs, one of our Sunday school classrooms, cleaned a lot of stuff out. And actually, uh, we even put Tim to work. Um, doing some of that yesterday, and it's totally like Tim to just kind of jump in uh, where he's needed, and so we're really grateful to uh, all of you who helped with that yesterday. Uh, we have today, the Crop Walk is coming up. The Crop Walk is a ministry of Church World Service, and it's something that we do in partnership with other churches here in town, and Church World Service, part of their mission is to alleviate hunger around the world, and they do that with the help of these Crop Walks, which are fundraising walks that go to support their uh, ministry around the world, but also uh, brings back money into our local community so to support our local food banks. So we're appreciative of all your help with that. And if you'd like to sponsor a walk or if you'd like to walk yourself, there's details about that in the bulletin, or we do have people uh, stationed outside who can tell you about it after the service as well. <coughs> Next Saturday, we have uh, another opportunity to be in ministry, and that's gonna be with our cleanup at Medford Park. For the past couple of years, we've adopted this park, and we have been uh, working to clean it up on a regular basis. And so this year, that uh, date is coming up next Saturday. And it's going to be from 2 to 4, and uh, we invite you to join us for that. There's more information in the bullets, and we invite you to sign up and let us know that you want to take part in that. Our Trunk or Treat is also coming up next Saturday, or next Sunday, I'm sorry, next Sunday uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. We have our Trunk or Treat here at the church. You can get involved in that. We'd love to have you bring your kids, your grandkids. Um, all the children in your life are welcome here, and we'd also love it if you'd come and you'd set up a trunk and uh, hand out candy to these trick-or-treaters, and we'd be really appreciative of your help in making this a great event for the church. And then finally, uh, one more announcement is that we have a new members class. So all those of you who are thinking about uh, becoming part of this congregation in a formal way, uh, we'd love to have you come and join us next Sunday after this service, so about 12.15, Join us uh, in Boker Hall, just right up this way, uh, for lunch and also then for our membership class. And so we'd love to have you RSVP to the church office so that we know how many to expect for that. I think those are all the announcements. I do want to welcome the Monsclo family. We're really excited to celebrate the baptism today. And uh, so we're looking forward to that a little later in the service. But thank you all for being here. All right. I think those are all the announcements for today. So we'll continue on with the uh, call to worship. Please rise for our call to worship. Come with your questions. Come with your all. God the Spirit over the dark waters meets us here today. Come with your energy. Come with your weariness. For the God who breathes new life into the dust meets us here today. Come with your sadness. Come with your joy. For our Creator, who dared to become human, meets us here today. Come with your compassion. Come with your love. For the Creator, who fashioned each one of us in God's own image, meets us here today.
You may be seated. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy and merciful God, we confess that we have not always taken upon ourselves the yoke of obedience, nor been willing to seek and to do your perfect will. We have not loved you with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. Neither have we loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have called to us in the need of our sisters and brothers, and we have passed unheeding on our way. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is the good news. Jesus loves us, and there's nothing we can do about it. We are made in God's own image to love and serve God and our neighbor in all we do. Truly, we are both beloved and forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Please take a moment to greet those around you.
So I'd like to spend some time uh, talking with our kids. Do we have any children to come forward today? Would you like to come and join us for a couple minutes? Why don't you get sit? You want to sit right in here? Anybody want to come join? Come on. Have a seat. So what's this thing that I've got? What is this? The toolbox, right? Kind of heavy, actually. You want to try to pick it up? Pretty heavy, right? Oh, you can do it. Excellent. Now drop it on your toes. Okay. You want to try? There's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, a lot of stuff, right? So let's take a look. Let's think about what kind of stuff might be in a toolbox. Um, hammer. Okay, I've got one of those. So what would you use that for? Nailing nails. That's right. What's another tool you might find in a toolbox? Good. I do that sometimes, too. I hammer my thumb. I've done that. <laughs> One time I almost passed out because I started to bleed. And I, oh. Now that happened once. A wrench. Yeah, I've got one of those. Um, I've got a bunch of those, actually. I'm going to make a big mess. This is what I do when I'm doing work. So right there's a wrench, right? What, what? So what do you use this for? Or to or loosen things, right? Perfect. What else? Screwdriver. Yep, I've got one of those. All right. Um, yep, so there, I've got, I've got all kinds of screwdrivers. I've got ones like this, right? And then I've got, um, let's see, I've got another one like this, right? So these at least are a pair that kind of look alike. That's kind of interesting. What else? Clippers? Yeah, I've got some of those. Yeah, so what do I use that for? Yeah, you can use these to trim wire. That's perfect. These, you could use these to bend and to trim wire. That's perfect. What else? Good. I do have a level. That's why this is so heavy. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. So what do I use that for? That's right. Perfect. Very good. So you use it. So you use it. You look at where the bubble is. Perfect. What else? <laughs> What's that? Masking tape. I don't have any masking tape. I do have, I have some electrical tape, though. Use those for when you're working with uh, electric wires. What else? A box knife. I've got one of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's good. Perfect. <laughs> what else? One more, Tim. Somebody else have one more? Good. Okay. Super glue. I don't have any super glue in my box. Bum, bum, bum. Right? No super glue in my box. But I do have super glue at home in case, in case something breaks. One more that I might have. All right, one, Abby, did you remember? What's that? A measuring tape. That's right. So what do you use that for? Measuring stuff. Yeah, that's good. Of course. What else would you use it for, right? Okay, well, I could use it for this. Boink. Right? Okay. So, all right, so what's the point of having all these tools? And what, what do these tools have to do with anything? Okay. So, I have all these tools so that whatever projects come up, whatever needs to be done, I can go to my toolbox and I can find them and I can do some work, right? So one of the things that I might say is the church is a little bit like God's toolbox, okay? How do you, it's heavy? Yeah, that's perfect. Yes. Yes, it's very heavy. Also, though, also, because when God needs something done in the world, God can look at the church, speak to the church, and ask the church to do something out in the world so that when people are hungry and they need to be fed, God says, well, I have a tool for that. I've got somebody who cares about that and who will go out and do that work. When God sees that somebody is lonely, then God can send one of us to go out and help that person sit with them, talk with them, pray with them, so that they won't be lonely anymore right? God has all kinds of tools in us that God can use to help fix and heal the world. And that's what God does every single day. 
So what do you think? Is, is the church like a toolbox? Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. yeah? It's way heavier than a toolbox. It's way heavier than my toolbox. That's right. All right, so let's take a minute. We'll pray together. How about if I say some words, and then if you want to repeat after me? How's that sound? Can we do that? You want to put your hands together? All right? And I'll say some words, and you repeat after me. Dear God. All right, help me out. Thank you for giving us the church. We want to be your toolbox to help and to serve wherever you need us. us. We pray pray. that we can do this this. in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. Thanks very much. See you. I got to clean all this stuff up. leave it for now.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. That was beautiful. Talk about knocking it out of the ballpark. Wow. Um, our reading today is from James chapter 2, verses 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such a faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes or daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Our second reading is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to Thanks God. God. Amen. Amen. Good morning. My name is Claire Rich, and I have the privilege this morning of introducing you to Tim Dayton, the Executive Director of REACH. We first got to know Tim about nine years ago when we were taking the youth group on a mission trip to Redbird, Kentucky, and we needed somewhere to spend the night on the way. Uh, Tim very graciously offered the floor of his church, and that's where we stayed for that year and the next. And then serendipitously, as um, our relationship with Redbird was coming to a close, Tim started REACH and invited us to join with him. So for the last seven summers, we've taken a group of 25 to 30 people, kids and adults, to work in Roanoke, Virginia with REACH and just be in service to the community. Um, I started making a list of all the things that were important to me about REACH, things that we've learned about ourselves, things we learned about each other, and things we learned about being in service. It started getting kind of long, and I decided I'd just let Tim preach this morning, and I'd spare you that. Um, but I will share with you one thing. One of the most important things to me is that when we go, we're really not so much focused on what can we do for somebody else but we're focused on how can we be in relationship with each other and other people and live the kind of life that Christ called us to live. That has meant so much to me over the last seven years that um, I'm still connected with REACH after doing all those mission trips. I'm serving on the board of directors and um, so I get to continue to be a part of REACH and I get to continue to help Medford United Methodist Church be a part of REACH. So we welcome Tim Dayton. Thank you, Claire. Excellent. Um, it, it's an honor uh, to be here. It's an honor because of our affiliation with Medford for the last seven or nine years. Um, but also, it's an honor because I get to talk about my passion and my vision. Um, Joe, I don't know how you do three services with the same message. I don't think I've said what I wrote down yet, even though I woke up at 4 a.m. to change it. Um, so I I'm going to talk to you even more from my heart and see if I can actually do it in the, uh, on time, because I think I've messed everything up uh, earlier today. So I'm going to tell you uh, who we are, what we do, how we do it, but more importantly to me is the why we do it. So the who is very easy. Uh, we're a nonprofit. We prefer to call it an impact organization because we're out there to make a difference. We're not out to just spin our wheels and spend money or whatever uh, that kind of nonsense it are. Um, I am the executive director, uh, and all that means is I was the one crazy enough to start it on my own, and my board of directors at that point Anytime I asked if we could do something, they said, are you doing it, and is it free? And I would say yes, and they'd say, go ahead. Uh, so it's very easy. And so uh, we developed this, and it started seven years ago. What we do, very simply put, is we connect and engage people or organizations, and that could be a neighborhood group or a nonprofit or a church, uh, to positive service experiences. You need to understand what a positive service experience is because what it is 
is where you see a need, you meet that need, and you get to see that need met. So you see the results of your actions. So that's what we do. How we do it, because uh, REACH owns nothing. How we do it is we partner or collaborate or work with or cooperate or any one of those words that you want to use with not only churches like yours, uh, but other nonprofits, uh, neighborhood organizations, uh, the city, code enforcement, whoever that actually gives a darn and wants to make a difference, we partner with them because what we bring to the equation is work, workers, uh, people that are interested in trying to make a difference, people with talents. Hence, uh, when we talk about what are our tools, the tools are you guys. So we use you, the, the, the other nonprofits, and all those kind of things. So that tells you what we do, how we do it. The why is a little bit more difficult. So I want to tell you real quick about the, the area where we work. It's in uh, Roanoke, Virginia, uh, southwest Virginia, kind of tucked away in the corner. It's a population of about 100, 120,000. It's not unlike any place you've ever lived before. There are some fairly well-to-do areas of Roanoke, and there are some areas that are not so well-to-do. Uh, the poverty rate there is 16, 17%, same as it is everywhere in the United States. Um, there is a class called working poor, same as the United States, which is about 75% of all people in Roanoke, but it's 75% of all people in the United States. What working poor is, is people who live paycheck to paycheck. They can't save up money, but they're paying their bills. These are good citizens. These are people you know, um, participating in, in the goodness of the world and doing the things that they need to do. Uh, these are good people. Well, Roanoke, like a lot of towns, most of that poverty and most of those working poor are in a quadrant, and we work in that quadrant. So for years, I knew that I wanted to make a difference. And let me tell you why, because what I really want to convince you of the importance of uh, and the God-given gift that uh, God gives us, the joy of service. Now, that means that you're happiest when you do for somebody else. Now, a lot of people are like, whoa, where does that come from? But actually, all of us, all of us in the United States know it in one form or another. So I'm going to give you my story to show you how I learned about it. I grew up an hour from here in Ambler, Pennsylvania. My dad was a cap ex-captain in the Marines, and he worked at a manufacturing, Philco manufacturing plant, and so he was a line manager. He was working, blue collar, we paid our bills, we were, well, he actually figured out a way to buy a house, of course, houses only cost $20 back in that day. Um, and so we lived in a neighborhood with other working people, and we became Presbyterian. So I learned, because of my dad's marine background, duty to country. I learned because of Presbyterian church, duty to God, and we were in a very, very strong neighborhood, so I learned duty to the neighbors, duty to family. So for 10 years, I knew the importance of duty, and you go out and do these things. Duty is one of the reasons we serve. Second, we moved when I was about 10 or 11 to New Jersey because my dad made it. He got offered a job where he commuted into New York City. So we lived in North Jersey in a community very similar to Medford. Um, and because we had made it, we became Episcopalians. I guess that's why. <laughs> and I learned a new thing. I learned to he who has given much, much is expected. I learned about the responsibility of giving back. And so I said, well, that's pretty cool. I, I understand there's duty and now there's responsibility and that's good. Um, when I was 18, um, I went off to college. It wasn't my idea, it was my dad's. Um, I thought I would just goof off for a while. He, he didn't understand that. Um, it wasn't my duty or responsibility. Um, and I met a Catholic girl who I dated for three years, and if you want to date a Catholic girl, you go to Mass and you learn about Catholics. So now I had three years' experience where I learned about uh, Catholics and I learned about uh, social justice. I learned about justice and, and caring for your fellow man and equality and Dorothy Day and the Catholic Workers' Movement. And that was very impressive to me. So now I learned a new way of serving it was, my, it was justice, it's what you had to do. So I'm all about duty and I'm all about responsibility and now I'm all about justice. Uh, and then I met and married the love of my life. It was our anniversary yesterday, 39 years. It's Bonnie. Thank you. You're getting me off the hook. For our 10th anniversary, I took 40 youth group people uh, camping and I, I don't tend to remember where to be on my anniversary. Um, and so um, for my short-lived experience, experience as a Baptist, um, I learned a little bit about guilt, and as a Protestant, I was not interested in that whatsoever. 
Um, so she didn't want to be Episcopalian. I didn't want to be Baptist. So we met where else? In the United Methodist Church. <laughs> now, the reason we met there actually wasn't because it was United Methodist. It was because they had a softball team. <laughs> and the softball team promised me when I joined it that they had a keg of beer at the end of every softball game. We never had a keg of beer. So I'm not exactly sure whether that was... I, I, I still am waiting for that. Um, but... The Methodist Church was wonderful for me because I started to learn more about John Wesley. I started to learn more about an active faith, uh, a Christian living, being involved in your faith and, and being a doer. And I learned the scripture um, that was a fundamental part of that, which came that we read today, which is James 2, verses 14 through 17, which talks about the importance of um, action. And so I was all about action. So what I, want to, what I want to tell you is I started learning about service and that service was an important part of who we are, no matter whether it was duty, responsibility, or guilt, or social justice, or whatever. And so REACH was formed around this fact that serving was the key component. I'll give you the short version of it, but what I finally discovered is the reason they're all wrapped around it is because it is fun. And fundamentally, it is fun because we were made that way. We're made in God's image, and being made in God's image means we have the same characteristics of God. And when is God doing what he wants to be doing? When is he happy? Read the Gospels. He does all the time. Whether it's feeding or clothing or hanging out with kids or sitting around or pre whatever it is, he's doing, and that's when he's active. So reach is based on the fundamental belief that we're all made with the joy of serving. So let me get real quick to the why of reach. I told you what we do and how we do it. The reason why we do it isn't because we fix houses. That's wonderful. Isn't because we feed people. That's wonderful. Isn't because we close people or we take care of homeless people or we play with you. The list goes on and on because we do all those things. But the reason we do it is we're trying to teach the joy of serving. Now think about this for a minute. You all who go on this trip get the joy that you get from doing from somebody else. You get it. You do it all the time. Methodists, we talk about it all the time. And so if we get that joy, what if the communities that we're helping out understood that too? How empowering would that be that instead of us going and doing for them, we go and show them um, what it looks like and what it feels like, and we're the spark. We go in with 40, 50, 60 people, and we do this work. Well, we've been doing it seven years. We've done 100,000 hours of service to the community, trying to rebuild trust and show them the joy. Medford alone, as one of our partners, has done 10,000 of those hours. We're making a difference because it's all about the joy. Our latest project, because the community has gotten behind it, behind it, is to restore an abandoned home because we finally found something that everybody, which seldom happens, agrees is a bad thing. Everybody else has an opinion, but everybody hates an abandoned home. It's unsafe, or there's narcotics, or it, it causes my house to go down. All kinds of reasons. So they're behind it, and we started that project, knowing that when we finish one, we take the money, all the money out of that, start the next two. And as God would have it, he's, he's teasing me. He's shown us the next two before I finish the first one. So that's a whole other story. But what I want you to realize is that what your group does is besides all that fantastic work, is changing attitudes. Would you bow your head, please? Dear Lord, I thank you so very much that you give us the opportunity to serve and that we get to feel good. Heaven knows. I mean, I love feeling good. I love doing for other people. Everybody does. But if we truly want to make a difference, we need them to feel that same joy that we feel when we give. So we need to find ways that they can give back also. Help us to do that as we go out into this world. In your name, amen. Close. Hey, we're going to sing one of my favorite songs. It was one of the first uh, cool songs uh, in, a, in the early <laughs> 70s that was added to the hymnal. But in the uh, power of the Methodist Church, they forgot some important words. In the last verse, we get to shout something from the mountaintops, and they don't let us shout anything. So you're allowed to shout out, praise God, after we sing, I'll shout it from the mountaintops, because... That's something the Baptists might do, Tim. So, uh, so, and I'll even give you two, ch two chances Bonnie to do will that. Be happy. So, uh, so, Mr. Adams, we will tag, I'll shout it from the mountaintops two times. So we'll see how that goes.
seated. We have the opportunity today to celebrate this baptism, so we're really excited. and invite the Mouskalo family to come forward and uh, join us here at the, uh, the baptismal font. Kayla, would you like to come? Do you want to come up? Come on. I love your boots, by the way. Yeah? Were you excited about that? So as we uh, begin, we're going to be on page 39 in the hymnal. Um, for those who would like to follow along in the hymnal, uh, the words will also be on the screens here. But uh, let me just uh, introduce to you the Moscow family. So we've got Michaela, and this is Skyler, who's being baptized today, and Joseph and Sydney. Now, um, Joseph and Sydney have been uh, connected to the church for, for a while. Since I've come, um, I've seen them a good deal. But one of the things that I'm sad to say is they're going to be moving uh, before too long. So one of the things uh, that one of the reasons why they want to have, celebrate the baptism now. It's because Joseph is uh, taking a job. He's going to be moving. They're going to be moving to North Dakota. Whoa! So, um, and I uh, know that that's going to be a hard thing. Also, I wanted to introduce to you uh, Lindsay and Timothy, so uh, who are going to be Skyler's godparents. And so, thank you for being here today, and thank you for being part of Skyler's life and part of this day. So, let's join together in the baptismal liturgy. It's on page 39 again. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and we're given new birth through water and the Spirit. In all this, it's God's gift. It's offered to us without price. So on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil and justice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, please say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord, in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? If so, please say, I do. And will you nurture Schuyler in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, please say, I will. So I ask all of you, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Yes. And will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as it's contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray together. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. And after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell Tell of God's God's mercy mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and he was anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all the people. Now pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and Skylar who will receive it, to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. How are you? How are you? Hmm? Oh. Are you ready for this? Skylar, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So can you all come and gather around her? And if you'll lay a hand on her somewhere, we'll say prayer. Perfect. Very good. All right, let's pray. Skylar, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born by water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ. Through baptism, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation and made to share in Christ's royal priesthood. We are all one in Christ Jesus. With joy and thanksgiving, we welcome you as a member of the family of Christ. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and to your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, to confirm their hope, and to perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you, in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. And now, Skylar, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. Amen. Can we welcome Skylar? I think, I think that I have made a new friend, which is a good thing. Very good. So she's really cute. Would you, would you mind taking her for just a little walk around the sanctuary? Love that. Congratulations. Congratulations, Michaela. Congratulations, Michaela. Give me a high five.
And one of the traditions that we have is that uh, our prayer shawl ministry in the past couple of years has begun to make these baptismal blankets. And so um, we also want to present this to Skylar today. And we thank um, those members of that ministry who have uh, been faithful in undertaking this uh, project. And we're grateful for that. So she's very beautiful. And she's very sweet. And we're really happy to have her. All right. So, Bethany? All right. So, uh, to begin our mission moment, I would like to take the time to introduce Craig D. Marino. This was Craig's first mission trip, and I have to say how impressed I was at how wonderfully he did. Being introduced to the mission trip experience by being pushed outside of your comfort zone uh, with additional minimal sleep is a big thing, and I want to say Craig did an amazing job to rising to the challenge of whatever we asked him to do. And at this time, I would ask Craig to come forward to share a little something with us. Hello, my name is Craig DiGiammarino, and this summer, I, along with 20 other kids my age and nine adults from our church, traveled to Roanoke, Virginia. We participated in the REACH mission trip, mission and community development program that serves the southeast region of the city. The youth mission team traveled to Roanoke each summer because we, ha we have the opportunity to be, be a part and of and to witness relationship building in, our, in action. Over the course of a single week, we were able to create lasting friendships not only with each other, but with, with the people whom, whom we'd been called to serve. At REACH, the mission is to restore hope, alleviate loneliness, and empower individuals by bringing folks together to transform homes, lives, and entire communities. During our week in Roanoke this summer, the community programs our church was able to be part of included the Angels of Assisi Animal Shelter, the Community Garden, the Salvation Army, the Rescue Mission Pack a Lunch, and the United Methodist Church, the Food Bank, a, a beautification mural paint project at the Food Bank, Goodwill and Project 709, which is, which is one home renovation that is a, a part of the Southeast Re Revitalization program, Project. As you can tell, we had a busy week full of varying opportunities to serve. Having the opportunity to be completely immersed in this environment was very empowering and will leave a lasting impression on my life. During my time at REACH, I visited the animal shelter where I provided help in cleaning cages and filling dog treats. This support allowed me to work allowed those working in the facility to be with the animals that need the love and attention. At the food bank, and I spent time sifting through breads and fruits to weed out the donated items that were not able to be shelved, and prepared the food bank to hand out perishable items to veterans in the city. The work in the community garden was challenging as we weeded and mulched garden plots in the hopes that families living nearby could use the space to grow their own fresh vegetables. The project had, that had been a large impact on me was when I worked on the home renovation. Using my hands to rip out insulation and run wiring in the home gave me a sense of accomplishment. I learned a lot during my time renovating, but it also really impacted me to see the transformation of the home in just a few short days. On behalf of the entire mission team, I would like to thank you, the congregation. Your, final, your financial support was vital to us to allowing our group to make this trip and have these experiences that affect change in Roanoke. But also, knowing our MUMC family here was supporting us with thoughts and prayers provided us with the sense of community and support that gave us the strength to be a part of this, this time away, being the hands that serve. In addition, I'd like to take a moment to introduce Heidi. Well, you could probably start up your way up now. <laughs> um, Heidi was one of the nine adults who attended the mission trip this year. It was not her first mission trip. She has been a part of the adult team um, on several times when we've gone to Roanoke. Her hard work and resourceful nature are a welcome contribution to the group. Heidi has a wonderful way of teaching the youth and helping them feel empowered by their accomplishments. And so now we'll hear from Heidi. Good timing. What happened? I uh, broke my ankle. Marathon training gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
Okay. So good morning. As you said, I'm Heidi Paul Hamus. Um, this was actually my fifth trip to REACH, so obviously I have really enjoyed it there. Um, over the years, I've scraped paint, uh, painted, put up sheetrock, installed floors, built porches, all uh, different types of projects. But this year, um, I worked with a team of youth designing and painting a mural on a large uh, refrigerator and freezer at a local food bank. Um, as we painted, we also got to know the local residents who volunteer at, at uh, the food bank, as well as those who get their food there. Um, I tend to be a very task-oriented person. I like to know my task, you know, understand what the expectations are, and complete it to the best of my ability. But one thing that I've gained from Tim and the program at REACH is that the given task, no matter what it is, is less important than the relationships that you build along the way. Uh, at REACH, Tim challenges us to approach each task with the words, here are my hands, how can I serve? He also challenges us to listen to each other's stories and to share our own stories with those we meet. As we painted each day, the people who came through the food bank gave us suggestions, commented on our progress, joked with us, and also shared with us some of their own stories. We met artists, veterans, parents, grandparents, and learned about their lives. Our interactions with them brightened my day, and I like to think that our mural will continue to brighten their days. Even more importantly, the lessons that I learned at REACH have stayed with me. When I'm asked to help with something that I'm not really all that excited about, and public speaking comes to mind, I, re I remember the words, here are my hands, how can I serve? And I try to see what God wants my role to be, and it is not always the same as what I think my role should be, but it usually turns out okay. Also, when I find myself getting overly focused on a task in front of me, instead of the person standing next to me, I hear Tim's voice in the back of my head, do you know their story? Frequently I don't, and it gives me the opportunity to ask. So if REACH has had this kind of a lasting impact on a 54-year-old like me, who's somewhat stuck in my ways, imagine the impact it has on the youth we send there and the people in Tim's community who are touched by it. So thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. So we've heard a lot about REACH and how they do their work, and one of the things I really appreciate it about this whole project and this whole program and who Tim is, is that it's really about empowering other people um, in so many ways. And part of that empowerment really comes through listening to people's stories and being in relationship with them and understanding that you're not there to take care of people, but you're there to help them to take care of themselves and have the hope and the trust and the faith that it is possible to make things better. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm really excited about this partnership. And one of the things that we'll have the opportunity to do today, Tim mentioned that uh, they have this opportunity uh, to acquire two more houses. Uh, right now they have uh, about 15,000 of the $22,000 that's needed in order to acquire these two houses. And it's not 100% certain that this deal will, will come to pass, but we know that there will be other deals out there in the future. Um, and we know that this is part of uh, Tim's strategy to help work in, uh, the, in the neighborhood of Southeast. And so I want to give you the opportunity to be involved with him and partner with him in that. So as we leave today, there will be uh, one of our youth outside with a collection plate. And if you'd like to make a donation to help kind of cover um, some of that $7,000 that Tim's trying to raise here in the next few weeks, uh, we would love to have your help with that. And as we continue now, we'll offer God our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. And uh, just be ready uh, when you're coming out the door to be able to uh, give to help REACH accomplish its mission. Thank you. Thank you. 
please join with me in the prayer of dedication. Gracious God, you are the Lord of heaven and earth. You sent Christ, your Son, to fully reveal your abundant and deep love for all you have created. We love to be more like Jesus, who kept your commandments in every respect. Let our thoughts and deeds be directed by your spirit of truth, who lives in our hearts. Use these gifts and offerings to advance our church's ministries so that our neighbors will experience your loving care. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. we prepare to enter into a time of prayer, I want to lift up a couple of prayer requests. Um, first, I want to say uh, happy birthday to Catherine and Elizabeth Catpano. It's their birthday today. They celebrate their eighth birthday. So, and uh, on the other end of the spectrum, we had one of our members today celebrating her 97th birthday. Um, Lillian Ashera um, celebrated her birthday today as well. And also Gwen Waspold has birthday today. Let's celebrate with her. So, um, and uh, one of the prayers that was lifted up a little earlier is a friend of uh, Bob Bankard's, um, Joe, who's in the hospital. Uh, we want to pray also for, um, for Carolyn Scheffler, who had some surgery this week uh, for her hip. And also, um, we want to pray for Ann Wills, who was diagnosed with cancer this week. Uh, I want to lift a prayer for uh, one of my friends uh, and colleagues in ministry, uh, Renee McCleary's family. Um, Renee passed away this week. Uh, she was my superintendent when I was in the northern part of the state. And uh, so I just want to give thanks for her life and, and pray for her family. So as we pray here, I'll give you the opportunity to raise other names, our concerns, situations that you uh, want to be in prayer uh, for today. So let's take a moment. Let's begin in silence. Lord, we give you thanks for this opportunity to be in worship. We give you thanks for the opportunity to hear about what you're doing in the world through the gifts, the sacrifices of our people. I give you thanks for so many in the life of this church who have given of their resources, who have given of their time in order to be part of those uh, 10,000 hours worth of work that's been done in the community of Roanoke. And just pray that you would continue to use REACH in a powerful way to transform Southeast Roanoke. We pray for the people of the city. We pray for um, those who are struggling to find hope. We pray too here for this congregation and ask that you would give us wisdom to understand how we can reach out and be of service in our own community, how we can connect with people, how we can um, just demonstrate Christ's love for them. We know that it's not always easy, that it's harder to hear the stories than it is to do the work sometimes. We just pray that you'd give us the wisdom and the vision uh, to do that. We give you thanks for everything that you're doing through us, and we trust that you will continue to do uh, great works through this congregation. We have a history that is uh, long, we have a history of being willing to step out in faith. And we just pray that you would continue to encourage us and lead us and guide us. Show us where the next opportunity might be. Lord, for um, the ability to celebrate with the Moscolo family today and for Skylar and for her life, for Michaela and her life, for uh, Joe and uh, for Sydney today, we just ask your blessing upon them and uh, bless them in their transition. We give you thanks for our friends who have already been named and um, pray your blessings upon them. And are there other joys or concerns that you would like to celebrate this morning?
Lord, we pray for those who have just been named, all those who are affected by natural disasters and disasters of our own making. Lord, we just pray that you would um, encourage those who have suffered great loss, that you would help people of faith, people like us, to be able to find their way, to be able to stand beside them, to walk with them, to encourage them, to lead them, to guide them. But most of all, just to be present to them. Lord, help us to hear the stories. Help us to do the work. Send us forth today in Christ's name that we might know the joy of serving others. We pray all these things in the name of your son Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing the first verse of Here I Am, Lord. At REACH, our vision is of a world where everyone has discovered the joy of serving and uses that joy to transform their own lives, their communities, and the world as they create, as we create heaven on earth. Go forth and do likewise. Amen. Amen. Amen.